What's up everyone, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Tesla Spy and a couple of other tickers and break down what's going on with some very important things that could be coming out that will affect the markets, not to mention some important resistance levels. But let me just mention that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. So looking at Spy, we have this 521 resistance area to be watching for. If we do manage to break this, there will, will be an attempt to go up towards this 20 EMA at 525. And if that were to break, we'd, we'd be going all the way up to about 532 all over again. So we have this very, very key chop zone that happens to be right up there. And if I end up dipping back down, I'd be watching basically uh, a, a very, very key support at this 515 uh, area. Uh, and if we end up losing that, then there's going to be a big dip all the way back down to about 510. So right now, it looks like the market's trying to push a little bit higher amidst this data that came out. Uh, that has to be a global composite PMI was a little bit below expectations, not too bad. But what was more important was the services sector. This was all above expectations. So PMI was above expectations. Employment was above expectations. Everything was decent. Only prices were a little bit high, which could be a little bit negative for inflation. But besides that, most of the data was decent. That's very different from what we saw last week when we saw like manufacturing looking pretty bad, unemployment numbers going up, not looking too good. This is the first time we got some decent data and the market is reacting more positively. But let me just warn everyone that there's one more thing I wanted to just mention. Uh, Iran is once again in a very, very big situation with Israel. I just want to say that I just hope for peace, guys. I really don't like to you know get into geopolitics or anything like this, but if something were to happen, if there is violence that does escalate, this will cause a big move in the markets, in my opinion, just temporarily. So just be very, very careful. Uh, this could happen at any given moment. You want to be very, very mindful of this. Uh, there are threats going on that something will happen within, within the next 24 hours. So just be very careful. This will have a big effect on the markets. So for now, we're basically watching SPY test this 521 area. I think we could attempt to go a little higher, but we're just really shuffling here and really struggling to break this resistance. So it's a very, very big fight. If we do somehow manage to break it, I'll be looking at 525 to see if we break this. But overall, we're still kind of shuffling. So if you look at like the five minute time frame, this is how we've been moving. We're attempting to rebound very nicely. We do have a nice looking bullish structure, and this may attempt to push all the way up to higher levels to get closer to 525. But like I said before, if you look at the last few hours. It's been shuffle after shuffle after shuffle. We've been completely range bound. So I have to give this a little bit more time just to see how the moves develop. I want to call out ES because you have to remember that we're holding up decently. If we look at, for instance, the one hour time frame, we're actually making attempts to rebound right here. But we have resistance at our 20 EMA as well that happens to be around this 5260 area. If we were to break this, we'd be looking for a move closer to about the 5300s. If we fail to break this resistance to the 20 EMA, this could actually continue to dip and just maybe shuffle, either shuffle or dip back down. So that's what we're kind of doing right now. So make sure you watch that 5260 area is a very, very key resistance. For support, we have 5200. We'll see if that holds or not. So make sure you watch these levels and we'll see how things go. Uh, we'll see if we can break this resistance. I think we could try to retest it. But like I said before, it's just shuffling over there. For others like SPX, for instance, we're trying to rebound. We're going to be looking at resistance at this... 5380 area so 5360 to 5380 if we break that we could try to fill this gap all the way up towards the 5400s if you reject and start dipping it make sure you look at 5300 flat as key support i think we could actually try to push a little bit we may attempt to push this imbalance to the 5360s just for a bit if we manage to break this resistance but i think like i said before it might just be a small move. It's not looking that strong. It does not look like it's going to like break out or anything like that. I'm just seeing a little push that could be coming and then a lot of consolidation. It's still kind of lackluster, so we'll have to see what kind of reaction we get with all the news that's coming out. NVIDIA made a nice recovery attempt breaking past 95 to push up to 100. I'm looking at a 102 as resistance on NVIDIA. This is going to be our 20 EMA. If we manage to break this, you know, close above this and hold above 102 for at least an hour, I think we could go all the way up to about 107. If we fail to do that, we're just kind of shuffling. Our support's at 100. If we fail there, I'll be looking for basically 197.5, followed by around this like 195 area all the way down here. So yes, NVIDIA looks like it's a little bit more bullish. It looks like it wants to push a little bit higher towards our 20 EMA. 
but we haven't been able to crack that resistance. It does look like it might, may attempt to push a little bit, but we haven't cracked the key resistance yet. So just watch it and see if we get this break later on. So far, we're just kind of shuffling as we get close by. For Bitcoin, we dipped all the way down to about 50,000. I think a little bit below it. Now we're rebounding. But like I said before, Bitcoin's kind of shuffling here just under 55,000. We're kind of stuck, so we'll just have to give this some time just to see how things end up developing. We're still stuck within this range, so give it time. It may just continue to shuffle. Tesla is testing 202 as a key resistance. Make sure you watch 202.3. This is our 20 EMA. If we hold above this for over an hour, I'll be looking for a, a price target of about 208. If we fail to hold above 202, then we're going to likely just shuffle. We have 200 as support, followed by 198. If that breaks, 194 is coming, followed by, I would say, the 190 area. But we are looking like we want to push a little higher, might retest our 20 EMA, then just continue to shuffle from there. I'm not really seeing a whole lot else that's going on. We're just kind of stuck. For the QQQ, this could attempt to go a little higher. We have 440 as a key resistance. If we break that, I'd be looking for essentially 445 around this range right here. Uh, and then we also have this gap to fill around 447.5 if that breaks. But the problem with the QQQ is we have tough resistance at 440. We're kind of struggling to break it so far. So we're, we, we're trying to see bulls push us higher, but we're still struggling to break resistance. So we're kind of stuck in the middle. And that's why the market is kind of stuck in a way. Like there's there's two forces kind of colliding in different directions. And it's really tough for the bulls to really get that break. So to me, it looks like this may attempt to go higher, but we're going to likely struggle at resistance. If we do break it, we will rebound and start pushing, but we're not really there yet. We're still kind of struggling at resistance. For Apple, I forgot to talk about Apple. Apple is attempting to rebound. Make sure you watch resistance around this 212.5 area. If we do manage to break this, I'd be looking for basically 216. If we fail to do so, we have support all the way down here around 20, uh, 207 around that area. If that fails, then 202 is likely coming. So watch those areas. I could see a nice attempt to rebound a bit on Apple. We could even try to push. Uh, but our 20 MA and 212 is kind of tough, so we'll give that some time. For the IWM, we're trying to rebound as well. Uh, I'm basically basically going to be looking at this resistance all the way up here around this 20203 area. That's the level we called out earlier. If we break the 203s, I think 205 is coming, and then we have a gap to fill at 208 above that. So tight levels on the IWM. I noticed that it's lacking some strength right now compared to like other stocks out there. We were looking a little bit weaker as we're down a lot more at 2.8%. So small caps are taking a bit of a hit because of this news involving not only the recession, but also, uh, you know, all these different factors like the Fed and uh, the data that came out in manufacturing. So we're going to be very patient with this. It is attempting to rebound, but I want to see if we could hold 203. If we hold it, yes, there's going to be a little bit more upside potential for this. Uh, so we'll see. For Coinbase, we're making a nice move to the upside, but we have this 20 EMAs resistance around this 194 area. Break that, we're going all the way up to 202. If we fail to break this, watch support right over here, very simple, all the way down here around 184. So I think we have like 188 and 184 as supports. We'll see if these hold. So just give it some time. We'll see if this rejects or not. So just be very, very patient. It is looking more bullish though. It looks like Coinbase wants to push higher, but resistance is a little bit tough. So watch for confirmation if you could hold 190, uh, at least get up to 195 or higher. If we do hold that, then I think we will push more. So give it some time. Amazon was trying to rebound and hit resistance around 163, came short. Now it's coming back down. I'll be looking at 158 as key support if we lose 160. And then if that fails, this will be dipping back down towards 154. Our resistance that's very tough is at 164. We've got to break that to turn back up. Otherwise, we are still downtrending on Amazon, unfortunately. Unfortunately, for the bulls out there, we're still on a downtrend. Meta was trying to rebound, but now it's testing tough resistance. It's doing a good job at holding up. I would say 475 is our key level. If that breaks, uh, if we do hold above this area, I'd be looking for a target of 481. So we have some tough and kind of tight resistance on it. To break 481, if we do break that, then we could go all the way up towards like 486. So very tight levels on meta. And it's attempting to rebound, but it's not as strong. Uh, it was looking decent. This is a nice rebound move that it made. But like I said before, tough resistance despite that. Microsoft, we're going to be looking at 400. If it breaks this, we'll be looking for this gap fill all the way up towards 407. If it fails to do so, I'll be looking for a move back down towards 390. Four. So we'll have to see what kind of reaction we get on Microsoft. For Google, we essentially have 164 as resistance. If this breaks, we'll be looking for basically 166 and this nice gap full above. And if we reject, it, we'll be dipping back down towards 
161. So watch 161 as support and 164 as resistance. Right now, Google's kind of stuck, so we'll just have to give this a little bit more time. For the VIX, we have 43.8% uh, downside that just basically formed. Uh, we got this big rejection on the VIX, so it's really affecting premiums right now. So I'd warn you to be very careful with this. Given the situation with the Japanese yen, the dollar is also on a bit of a downtrend. Uh, this is very, very pivotal because of how borrowing is affected by this because of the change in interest rates in Japan. So that's having a big effect on the dollar right now. And then you also have to account for the fact that the yen is having a big effect on this as well. So you have to be very, very careful. Uh, but with that being said, the market is just barely testing resistance. It is attempting to rebound. I do see some upside potential, but even if we do see some upside potential and even a move to the upside, I'm not 100% confident the market's ready to get a big bounce yet. I'm not confident yet because first off, you know, we're, we just made a small move to the upside relative to how much we were down. And then secondly, we still have a lot of tensions around the world. You have to be very careful about this. So we'll see if anything happens. I love to be hopeful. I, I hope that things do not become way too violent. I hope that everything is very limited and you know, nothing too bad happens. I hope that uh, no one passes away. I, I would hope that. I, I I think it's unrealistic. I do think that something really bad it might be on in the works. But I just want to say that regardless of it, stay strong no matter what. Stay very, very optimistic. And just know that our long terms are still bright despite this news. Uh, my heart goes out to everyone and all the people out there who are going to be negatively impacted by this. But you know, it's very tough to hear about this, but we have to st stay strong no matter what, stay with one another, and do what's necessary no matter what. So I just, I just want to make that very, very clear. Uh, I, I really hate to see innocent people in so much pain, but when it happens, all we can do is just hope for the best and remain patient. So thank you all so much for listening. We will see what happens with this whole situation. That could have a big effect on the markets for the short term, and we'll just be very patient for now. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you guys in a few hours, and peace out.